everyone, this is Hannah with MyStemKits.com. I am the 3D modeler who builds all of the kits for our website, and I thought I would give you a walkthrough today on how I do that. So here I am, open in Blender, and I'm going to start by importing a one centimeter cube that I have pre-built. This will make sure that whatever I'm doing is to scale. So first thing I'm going to do is change the uh, view of it a little bit by hitting the number 5. This lets me see it in an orthographic view, which means if I change the views from like top or side or whatever, it's perfectly straight on and doesn't have any perspective in it at all. This becomes very helpful later on in the process. So in order to build a boat, I can go in and actually adjust the dimensions of my cube. So I'll click on it. Uh, that was with the right click. And then I click on the little cube up here, rename my object, boat. And let's say I want this to be five centimeters in one direction and two centimeters in the other direction. We'll make it one and a half centimeters tall. And now I have a basic rectangular shape. Now I'm gonna start forming it into a more boat-like shape. So I hit tab and that goes into the editing software. Then by clicking control R, I'm going to add some subdivisions here. Keep in mind as I'm doing this, this is not to uh, teach you all the hotkeys of Blender's there, Blender. There are lots of softwares that can do that for you in more depth. This is just to give you an idea, but I figure I'll mention it in case people are looking for that level of detail. So I've switched to a top-down view at this point, and I'm going to start pulling in the edges of it to make it have more of a point at the top of the boat. So by selecting all of the points going straight down, I'm affecting it all the way to the bottom of the boat. Already it's starting to look slightly more boat-like. So now going to a side view, let's make it a little bit smaller on the bottom. So I'm going to do a scale feature and scale it down. But I want it to affect more than just this bottom row. So Blender has an option it allows you to control the amount of the object you're controlling. So as you see, I move the circle up, it affects more and more of the object. So scaling it down to what looks right from the side. And since it is a boat, again, I'm going to slide this whole section a little bit further back so that it's more towards the front of the boat that is affected by the um, curvature. Now switching to a top-down view. select all of just the top faces. In order to do that, I kept the object opaque rather than see-through. And then I will extrude the objects. That is a way of either pulling out or pushing in within an object. So the short key for, or shortcut for that is E. That means that, as you can see, I'm pulling up or pushing down the selection of faces I had grabbed. But what I want to do is actually just scale them. So I'm hitting, then I clicked S to scale do that, and then I'm going to scale in just the Y direction. Now I can actually create an interior on my boat by hitting the E button again, extruding it down into the main body of the boat. I'm going to do that twice and scale down the bottom one. So now when I look at it from the top, I have a very basic boat shape. One of the cool features of Blender is you can go in and add modifiers to it. One of the great modifiers is the subdivision surface. That suddenly gives everything a nice curved edge to it without me having to go in and build that manually. If I still want this top edge to be sharp, I can add some more. These are called edge loops. So add some edge loops to the top and that makes it flatter along the top than it was before. One of the other key things to think about when you're modeling something is if you want to combine two objects. So let's say I want to add a letter to this boat. First thing I'm going to do is import one of my letter sets. And these are actually sets I built in Tinkercad and then saved out as a file to be able to use easily in Blender. So I only want the letter A here for this boat. So I'll select it, invert my selection. So I'm selecting all of the other letters and then delete all of it. So now all I have is the letter A. 
I'm going to move the origin. That's uh, the circle point here. It tells it where it's rotating from, where you're moving it from. It makes it a lot easier by centering it. So I just centered it. Now that I have my letter in the scene, I'm going to rotate it by clicking R, 90 degrees. Rotate it again in 90 degrees. You notice anytime I'm doing my rotating, I'm doing it from one of the orthographic views. So that's the top, side, bottom, or the front view. That way I make sure I'm only rotating it in the direction I want to be rotating it in. If I were to be in this view, oh, it's upside down. So if I was to be in this view and rotate it, it's going all over the place. It doesn't behave the way it's easy to tell what's going on. So that's why I try and do it from an orthographic view. Now this one admittedly does give me more visibility on what's happening. So if I want to be working from this view, what you can do in Blender at least is click on an axis. So I clicked Y and that's forcing it to only rotate around the Y axis. So I'll do that. Go over here, insert 180 to make sure it is precisely 180 degrees around. I can also go into my object settings with that cube again, look at the rotation, and see that it is at perfect 90 degree angles. So now that I have a letter that's in the right direction, I'm going to scale it up so that it'll be easier to see when it prints. And now, make sure you can see it's starting to come into the inside of the object here, which I don't want it to do. So I'm going to scale it down in that direction so it doesn't have as much width to it. Now it's not on the inside, but it's coming out on the outside and it's got a lot of depth to it off the edge of the boat. So that is just a really basic way to build a letter and insert it onto an object. Thing is, they're, two di they're still two different objects. So if I want to combine that onto this, the first thing I want to do is make sure that there is a line running through the center hole of the A. If I don't do that, it's not going to behave the way I want it to. So I'm just going to add a few extra subdivisions here. That'll help uh, the computer program do its, do its work while it's combining them. So now that I've got some more subdivisions right around where the letter is, I can go into this wrench again and add another modifier. So the modifier I want this time is called Boolean. In this case, I want to combine the two objects, so I'm going to change the operation to Union and then select the letter. And here you can see now it's changed to white. It's the same color, it's part of the same object as the boat. Before I do that though, I do want to show you the difference. If I were to click difference here, now it doesn't look like all that much happened, but the letter A has actually been indented into the boat. So if I hide the visibility of the letter, oh, hide the visibility of the letter A, you can see that it's actually pushing into the boat and cutting out the letter A. And if I did intersect, all it's showing is where the boat and the letter A overlap. So booleans are a really useful tool. You can use them for a lot of things. They're very helpful for objects like this where you don't want to have to manually build out something from the boat. But I will also show you how to do that. So if I wanted to add pegs to this boat like we have with our boats kit, I'm going to go back in, I hit tab to start editing the object again, and I'm going to add another subdivision. So if I wanted to add tabs to the, or pegs to the top of the boat, I go in and select those faces. That's what each of these little rectangular pieces is called, it's a face. So I select the ones I want, and I click E to extrude them. Now you notice when I have the uh, subdivision modifier on, I'm getting some really interesting curves going on along the edge of my surface here. So the way to, again, shore that up and make it a sharper turn is to keep an edge loop right there around the edge, and then I'm going to extrude it up from there. And again, I want it to have a nice square top, so that is how I would add pegs. I wanted to say curve the pegs in like I did on the boats we have in our kit. Add a couple subdivisions. And now I want to curve them in. So I'm going to go into my orthographic view, 
rotate this. Now you notice I'm doing the two sides separately because I need them to rotate in opposite directions. So I'm doing it very intentionally by typing in the amount I'm rotating it. That way I know I'm going to end up with a mirror image. Move this over, look at the amount I'm doing it. So negative 1.2. Replicate and reverse the amount to 1.2 on the other side. And that would be how to add that kind of curvature. So you can see, slowly but surely, this is how you would build a simple object in a program like Blender. If you're ready for printing, click apply to your modifiers and go up and export your file out as a OBJ or STL file for 3D printing. Thanks for listening to this little uh, tutorial on modeling and uh, hopefully you can get a good idea of what to do when you start building your own stuff. If you have any questions, there are a lot of great videos on YouTube that go through all of the details of how the software works and how to build stuff. Or feel free to comment below and we'll be sure to respond. Thank you and have a great day.